Hey, today I wanted to take a minute to do a video on on what is the best bow for you, a recurve or a longbow. And then, uh, if you've been doing this a long time, like myself, you probably got several of each bow. But I remember when I started, I couldn't afford all them bows, and so I uh, still can't. But I've accumulated them. But uh, anyway, I had to I had to choose one. That's what I could afford to buy. Daisy May walking around over here. But uh, so uh, we, I just kind of for a beginner I'll, I'll give you some some uh, pros and cons of between the basically I'm talking about between a recurve and a longbow make the choices there there are several different kinds of recurves and there's several different kinds of longbows so we'll we'll look at uh I got about a actually one two three four I got five of my bows right here and we'll talk about each one really quick and I'll tell you you know what I like about it but I also tell you from from a seasoned bow hunter, I'll give you what I think a new bow hunter should look at. Some points right there, traditional bow hunter, okay? So it's kind of windy. I'm down here in the swamp here, the edge of the swamp here at my house. You can probably see spring is in the air here. The pollen is thick, and I'm surprised I'm not getting killed by mosquitoes, but it's really windy. And my camera is, uh, I don't know if it's gonna, the wind's gonna mess it up or not, but I, I gotta get a better camera for low light and for uh, for my sound right there. So here we go. Let's look at some of these bows and uh, and get started. All right, I guess if you're if you've shot a compound and you're going to a you know you want to try a traditional, I would highly recommend that you shoot a recurve and probably even a takedown recurve to give you some mass weight in your hand, sort of a compoundish feeling grip. You know, it's much lighter than a compound, but comparable weight, it would probably be a, a better transition for you. And it's not a bad choice for somebody brand new to starting out with a traditional bow, simply because of the stability it has. I have here, I have, this is my, this bow is painted, skin up. It's not to look at, it's made for hunting. But this is a bare takedown. And the, actually, the riser is really old. It's uh, from Grayland, Michigan, before they moved to Florida. But it's got newer limbs for fast flight on it. And I've got, of course, I've got a Donnie Wilkerson Creek Walker Trading Quiver on it. It's a really fine quiver, and it works good on this bow. And uh, I had a, it's got like screw-in mounts. They keep pulling out for, a, you know, mounting a quiver there. So I just quit with that. This, this quiver works so good that this is what's on it and what's going to stay. And I normally don't like a quiver on my bow, especially long bows. But doing this filming thing, and it's just more convenient, just less stuff to carry. Works really good. But if you were going to uh, come from a compound to the recurve, this would be a good choice. And, and not necessarily the bear now. I love this bow simply for the nostalgia of it. But it's a good shooting bow as well. But there are a whole lot of options. They even make the really affordable, uh, I forget the name of it, Black Hunter, maybe? It's like a hundred and something bucks, but always remember, you get what you pay for. I got a lot of confidence in this bow. This riser is, heck, I don't know, at least 30 years old, maybe. But, uh, you know, you, you buy a hundred dollar bow, and I don't know that I want to go on an elk hunt with it, you know, and spend all that money. Go ahead and invest in a good bow. One, I believe, like a, you know, you don't have to buy a $1,200 bow, but there's some good bows out there that'll that'll last for you. And the Black Hunter may be a good option, but like I said, uh, I see a lot of horror stories about them coming apart. But anyway, this would be a really good choice for a beginner, somebody coming straight from a compound, or a beginner all the way. And, and you know, you don't have to have a quiver on it, but I'm just saying the, the mass weight of it gives it stability. Don't overbow yourself. It don't. This, this bow's fairly quick compared to my other bows, and uh, it's a good bow. It's uh, 60 inches long. I think it's 43 pounds at my draw length of 26. I've killed several deer and hogs with it, and uh, I'm actually shooting a pretty stout broadhead, big uh, Simmons broadhead. The last pig I killed, I shot through. Well, and uh, the first pig I killed with it's about 100. 30 pound boar hog, I shot through him and never found my arrow. Where well, I shot through him, I couldn't find my arrow. But I was in the swamp, man. But anyway, good choice. Take down recurve for the beginner or the uh, 
seasoned hunter. I mean, they add stability. This is what I'm hunting with now. I've struggled with my shooting a little bit. I don't get to hunt as much as I used to, and I want to make the very best of every opportunity I get. And I have the most confidence in this bow simply because of the stability. It's, it's fairly quick, and uh, it just works for me. I shoot it better than any bow I got right now, so this is what I'm hunting with. And I had got pneumonia earlier on, and uh, I hadn't got my strength back. I struggled. I tried to shoot some of my other bows this week, and I, it's like being a little overbowed, and my shooting got sloppy, and I finally got a handle on my shooting and hitting good anchor every time, the feather to the nose type deal. And this bow is the perfect poundage for that. And uh, anyway, it's a fine bow. Good choice. Take down, recurve. Really good choice for the beginner. Another really good choice for the is uh, I don't have a string on this bow and I didn't want to hunt one. This is my Acadian Woods right here. It's a one piece recurve. I think it's a classic, custom classic. Acadian Woods, it's got, uh, this bow is 62 inches long and it's just a one piece recurve. I love these bows here, but they're not as stable. No, I'm not talking about the model or the make, I'm talking about the style. It's not as stable as the takedown bow or in my opinion, the reflex deflex with the quiver on it. That mass weight, this is pretty light. This is comparable to a longbow, but it's gonna have a lot more speed. But you can throw a quiver on this joker and there again, you've got some stability. You've got a, you know, a fast shooting little bow here. One thing about these bows though, you, you know, if you buy one and it's 50 pounds, that's what it's gonna be forever. You get the takedown bows, you could always get, you know, you marry that riser, the grip is everything. But if you wanted to go up or down in poundage, you just buy new limbs and you're really shooting the same bow. It's just a few more pounds or a few less pounds, whatever you want to do. This is a, this is a special bow to me right here. I tagged out one year. I finished up by killing a really nice buck. And I killed him with this bow. I killed like, I don't know, five, six, seven deer that year with this bow. I killed 12 total. And you can't hardly see it anymore. But right there, is a good friend of mine's name, Warren Womack. This used to be his boat. Fine boat. Acadian Woods. But the one piece recurve, that's the whole point of all this. It's a good bow. Put a, it's gonna be quicker than, probably quicker than your one piece long bow. And it's gonna be stable with a quiver on it. And the grip is usually more forgiving. This has a really, really, really worked grip right here with a lot of, lot of detail in it. A lot of palm swell. It's got a thumb deal here, so it's hard. It's really hard to grab it wrong. Good bow, good bow. Alrighty, so you say I, I really want to shoot a longbow. I want to hunt with a longbow. Uh, beginner or coming from a compound, but that's what you want is a longbow. This is a really good choice. This bow is a my persimmon bow T. White made for me, but there's tons of reflex deflex longbows out there. And you put a quiver on it and that stabilizes it, give it a little bit of weight. And most of them are cut to center as well, or pretty close to center. So this is a really good choice. Uh, reflex deflex or uh, takedown longbow. Or not a takedown, but a one piece. You can get a takedown longbow. You can get takedowns just like that recurve, you know, three pieces with bolts on each end. Or some that come together as a sleeve, but this one is a solid one piece bow. And uh, probably be your most affordable option, you know, the one piece. And uh, there's a lot of, a lot of good ones out there that are, are pretty affordable. And this bow has a, it's pretty quick, pretty quick, pretty hard shooting bow. There again, I'm shooting a, shooting woodsman's in it. It's a fine broad head and I, I killed uh, several deer and I think one pig with this bow this year. And I forget how many deer, maybe three, three deer this year I killed with it. But anyway, that don't matter, it's a, it's a beautiful bow and um, if you was just hung up on a longbow, you wanted to shoot a longbow starting out, I would recommend a reflex deflex bow and don't get them super short bows to start with. They're, uh, a longer bow is more forgiving than a short one. Of the, if you get the same exact model bow, pounds, everything, the longer one's gonna be more forgiving than the short one for you. There's a reason why your Olympic archers shoot bows that are so long and your, your uh, even your bare bow shooters in modern 3D shoots, they shoot really long bows. And I, I would think, I think up to like 70 inches, really long bows. But uh, this is a good choice right here, the takedown. I mean, the uh, 
Reflex deflex longbow. Good choice. Good choice. And uh, I, one thing I like about these bows over the recurve is the it's really really hard to twist the limbs. You can't really tear one of these bows up. The limbs on a recurve are pretty easy to twist if you're not careful, especially stringing. You need to get a uh, a bow stringer for stringing. I never unstring that bow. It's strung, and I keep it strung for a year at a time. It don't hurt it. I've got recurves that have been strung for a long time, and they've not lost any weight. They shoot just as good as they did day one. You risk damaging your bow more stringing and unstringing than you would leaving it strung. You can't leave it strung in a hot car or something like that, you know, in some heat. But um, I do unstring these. They're they so easy to unstring. And, but um, the longbows, but it's a fine bow here. The, the reflex, deflex longbow is a really good choice for a beginner. And I really like shooting these bows, and I'm sure I'll probably hunt with this bow some right here, especially when I get my strength back a little bit. But uh, it shoots good. Good choice for a beginner coming from a compound or a brand new reflex deflex longbow. You put a quiver on it, adds a little stability to it, gives it a little bit of mass weight, and uh, it's a good choice. All right, this is my Northern Mist Classic. It's a hill style bow, meaning a straight end bow. And uh, these bows, these are fine bows, but I, I'll be honest with you, they're wonderful to shoot, and it's something, it's like a drawing to it. You either love them or hate them, I love them. But I would not recommend this bow for a beginner, this style of bow for a beginner. I, I wouldn't because of the, the grip takes them getting used to. Now, if you marry this bow and that's what you shoot from beginning on, and it may work out for you. For me, they... Some people love a quiver on them. I can't stand it because the bow is so light and the quiver sitting over here and kind of see. I seem I, I seem to torque it a little bit. I don't I don't know. And, but some people can shoot them really good with a quiver and they add stability. They love it. But uh, this is a fine bow. But this is more, in my opinion, of an intermediate level bow. This is one that you've already you're a good shot with your recurve or your reflex deflex long bow, and you want to you want another challenge. These are fine bows, and these bows are probably the most dependable. You're not going to tear this bow up. I mean, I mean, this bow, I don't think it's possible to twist the limbs. I'm sure you probably could. I, I mean, and they just, it's hard to mess them up. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a one piece of a, a straight stick, laminated. Fine bows, fine bows, but uh, there again, I don't, I don't think I would recommend this for a beginner. I would start with the takedown longbow or the reflex deflex uh, longbow or the takedown recurve. I would, I would start with something with a little more weight to it right here. And whatever you start with, it needs to be, you can't fight the poundage. If you have to, like if there's some struggle in it and you gotta shoot it quick because you can't hold it, that's too many pounds. Get you some uh, lesser pounds. It don't take a lot to shoot deer or hogs or if you're gonna be a target shooter, it don't matter how many pounds you got. Hill style, Northern Miss longbow. There's a lot of good hill style bows out there nowadays, but um, this is the best one I've ever shot, pretty much. But anyway, these are these are good bows. They're addictive, and uh, there's a draw. And there's, I just tend, I seem to want to hunt with it, but right now it's a few pounds too many for me. So I I, I can't. Uh, I'm gonna have to get built back into it after I get my strength back. But I do like hunting with that. I feel more confidence with that bear, and I'll probably hunt for it for hunt with it for a pretty good while. All right. All right. This is the last one I'm gonna cover. This is a self bow, and uh, this is definitely not a bow for a beginner. But you can start with it, and if it's what you start with, and you learn your bow, learn how to shoot it, you'll be fine. Same as the hill style bow. If you start with it, and you learn how to shoot it. I think maybe the Learning curve may be a little longer, but these are fine bows. And, and this bow I made myself, and that's really the, the draw of this bow. And for you beginners, are you coming from a compound and if you got that desire to make your own bow, well, go for it. But uh, this bow, you know, building your own bow and hunting with it and taking game, putting meat in the freezer, that is, that is really a big draw there. And these bows, I actually shoot this bow as good. I, I'm gonna take a few pounds off of it this evening probably. It's a little bit stout, and um, it shoots as fast as my Northern Mist right there, of a hill style bow, because I've uh, heated it and put some curve in the limbs, 
and it shoots a 600 grain arrow pretty hard. But I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the weight on it a little bit because I'm fighting it some, and that's the beauty of this. I can do what I want to with it. But you have to remember building these bows. If you take some weight off, you can't put it back on unless you shorten it. If you shorten it, that'll add some pounds. But uh, it's a beautiful bow. There again, if you was wanting to start out and you wanted to be hardcore, build your own, hunt with your own. This is it right here. Because simply because the the amount of tools you can, I build my own laminated bows. But it takes a lot of tools to do that. You got to have a press and a hot box, and there's a lot of things that you need to have. You don't have to have it. You could go somewhere and you can improvise, but you pretty much need some stuff. With this, if you have a, a good knife or a draw knife or even a good, you know, kind of a big knife and uh, some basic tools like a rat tail file and a rasp, uh, what do you call it, a farrier's rasp? I think you can get it at Tractor Supply or somewhere. You know, they do the horse hoofs with. That kind of stuff works really good, but. I, I roughed this bow out with a hatchet, and then I, uh, you know, I had a, I got a draw knife. I bought two draw knives at a flea market for 40 bucks. Look around, you can find some stuff pretty cheap to work with. But there you have it. That's a self bow. It's a, as far as forgiving goes. I actually say it's a little, a little more forgiving than the hill style bow, simply because of the grip I put in it, and it's it's fairly heavy. It's a piece of wood, you know, and. Um, you can put a quiver on them or off, but that really, you know, that's a, it's a primitive bow. I, I don't I don't think a uh, early man ever had a bow quiver. But that, anyway, that's a fine. And I, I intend to hunt with these bows a lot. I got a lot to learn about it. I'm going to heat treat it. This is a good bow. And if you were going to do this one as a beginner, it would have to be, it'd probably be because you want to build your own. This wouldn't be the bow I would start with if I wasn't into building my own. If I was just getting started out, I'd buy that takedown recurve. Reflex, deflex, longbow. There again. All righty. That's enough about bows. It's, uh, I really appreciate y'all watching my videos. It's uh, kind of had a rough year, been sick a little bit, but I still managed to, to do pretty good and put some meat in the freezer. And and now uh, small game season has gone out on the WMAs I hunt, so I won't be hunting pigs there. I may get me a pass for the Army base so I can hunt, I can hunt year round there, summer and in between turkey season and all that. So. Maybe we'll have some more hunting videos coming pretty quick. And I just wanted to share this. I had some guys asking me and uh, about what would what's a good bow to start with. And uh, name brands really, you know, you can spend a lot of money or a little money, but but uh, in my opinion, this sum us all up. You're a brand new beginner. You're fixing to start. I would I would push you towards a takedown recurve or longbow, three piece takedown because of the mass weight and the ability to go ahead and get you some more limbs if you outgrow the ones you got. And then, uh, you know, if you wanted that longbow, a little bit more traditional, I guess you would say, you'd get you a reflex deflex. But I'd stay away from really short bows early on until you, until you, until you, you know, get to be a, you know, you got your form down and you're shooting pretty good and you're seasoned a little bit. Then you can branch out and get the stuff you want. And I would also encourage you to go somewhere Go to some archery shops, archery shoots. I've never been to an archery shoot and asked the guy, I said, man, let me look at your bow, and he wouldn't let me look at it. <laughs> I, I went to some archery shoots, and that's where I, I bought a lot of bows, but I'd look at bows, and, mo and heck, I think everybody I've ever asked is let me shoot their bow. And so you can shoot, like you could pick up a bow and say, man, I think I want to buy one of them. They cost $800. You care if I shoot your bow a time or two, and they'll walk out there with you, shoot it three times, and in your mind you're thinking, no, I don't want this. But if you didn't have that opportunity, you're liable to have dropped that money on it and then didn't like it. And you're not going to sell it for what you got in it. So uh, go to shoots, archery shops, Big Jim down there. They tell me he's got a room full of bows and he's a good guy. He'll let you shoot stuff before you buy it and help you set it up after you bought it. And there's a lot of places in the, in the you know, like you can do that. But it's really, really hard to beat those old timers at the 3D shoots. You go visit with them and they'll, they'll get you, they'll help you with the setup all good guys that's the thing about this this brothers of the traditional bow stuff almost everybody's willing to help you thank you for watching this um, thank you lord for a fine day the pollen is thick out here my whole both our trucks are covered yellow <laughs> and uh we got some uh, good things coming this year y'all continue to watch uh subscribe and and share the videos and uh thank you lord for good health and we'll see y'all next time.